Hi guys, it's Mark, I'm beside the Y, and I'm at the Biblins, in the Y Limestone Gorge. Welcome to another Y Explorer video guys, it's been a really good walk in. Uh, it's about eight mile to the Biblins Bridge. This is the Biblins Bridge. It was built by the Forestry Commission in 1957. I think to link up the youth campsite, which is on the other side, which has been there since the early 1940s, guys. You can just see it, can't you? All the kids with their like steel-backed rucksacks, canvas. You know the the canvas bell tents, even hobnail boots to hike in. All the old vintage stuff. So yeah, people have been camping in this valley for decades, very long time. But I'm here, I didn't do a hiking video. As I said, it was a really nice hike in, eight miles. Um, I passed through uh, beautiful arable land, some woodland scenes. I visited old places that Paul and I had hiked before. Uh, in actual fact, I hiked the exact same route Paul and I hiked in 2013. We camped here in October 2013, which was an absolute fabulous camp. That was beside the Y, in the valley. Today though, we're going on top. We're going on top of the limestone bluffs which are known as, known as the Seven Sisters. And uh, when I get to the top there, I'm just gonna bivy simply. It's a, a Jeremy, Jer Jerry McVeigh type style bivy today. If you don't know Jerry McVeigh, check out the link guys. Uh, I'll put it in the description below and up top as well. Fantastic hiker, always bivying in the Irish mountains. Wonderful guy too, very friendly. So check his channel out. Well worth the time. So it's a bit of a bivouac tonight. Just going to put a, um, a ground sheet down and get my DOS bag out because it's not going to rain. It's not forecast for rain. So it's minimal tonight, guys. But the reason I'm up there is because I want to see what amazing views we get in the morning. We may get some good views tonight. Uh, we haven't got much of the night left. It's 20 to 8. Uh, it gets dark at around quarter to nine, so we've got about an hour to get, them, get on the top there. We might have a bit of light left, but let's walk across this bridge together, guys. Which has been here since 1957. So many people have enjoyed this bridge, enjoyed the views over the Y, down river, up river. There's beautiful sunlight here, look guys. Absolutely wonderful. I've captured some nice photos on the way in actually. The sunlight was bathing the valley in a rich hue, green hue, reflected in the water too. So right, I'm going to count one, and I'll tell you why I'm counting, is because the last time my brother and I came here, we stood at the eighth run in. So I want to stand there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we were inside the eighth. Um, I don't know what you call them. Wooden supports. And this is where I stood with my bro, with my twin. For the first time on this bridge, on the Biblins Bridge. I've been back a few times now and this is uh, another one of those. And I'm really glad to be here. 
and uh, going up the top, the Seven Sisters for the first time, I'm really quite excited. I'll tell you all about it when we get there. All right, if there's anything interesting along the way, you know me, I'll share it. <laughs> but meanwhile, I'm just going to stand here and think about my bro, think about Paul. You got the locks here, look. This tradition is kind of worldwide, isn't it? What's on that one? What's it say? Natasha and Mark. Huh? It's just nice to listen to the water now, the calming influence of the river. Always healing, always. Ah, oh, it's lovely to stand here. There are the limestone bluffs up there, guys. That's where we're heading. But we've got to find the way up there first. I'm really excited to get up there. There's a bit of a race on, guys. There's not much light, and I get, I've got to get to the top of these bluffs. All right, we're walking beside the Y. The Y is there on the left, and uh, it's what's known as St Martin's Pool down there. We'll take a quick look, actually, because it's quite interesting. whether we'll get a good look of this stretch of the river. Now, there's some nice light coming through the trees though. Yeah, there's some nice light coming through the trees. But this stretch of river between the gorge is uh, renowned for its salmon fishing and what's known as St Martin's Pool. It's the deepest pool in the whole Wai. Not sure how deep but deep. There's a second set of fine gates and a wall. At some point there's a track and we go up there. Yeah, it's got to be this track here. Follow the wall up and we should end up near King, King Arthur's Cave. I can't find that track. I'm going to have to scramble my way up. That looks possible. So I'm going to give it a go. Wow. That was tricky. It was kind of wet mud, loose rock, and uh, like any kind of scrambling. You have to watch what you're holding on to. Got some nice yew trees though. <laughs> I ended up right next to a yew tree. That's wonderful. I've got some more ways to go. But uh, yeah, we'll get to the top. This is the unofficial route up. I, I couldn't find the track. Oh well. I think this looks a nice place to settle down for the night though guys. I'll be up in the morning to find them bluffs. Even if it means asking a local. Never been up here before, see? Scrambled up some limestone, found a track, followed it to the best of my knowledge. 
you know, kind of guessing where the river was. The river's down there. The Seven Sisters are over there. But I went back that way and uh, I was going down. I was going down and down and down. I thought, well, the limestone walls are above me. So I've come back up and I'm on the top now. I think this is what they call the Doward. It's full of uh, old growth trees apparently. Well, all this woodland around here. But I find a very pleasant spot to bivy. It's a bivouac. I like that word bivouac, guys. So, whenever I do anything without a tarp or a tent, I am bivouacking. Mind you, bivouac means to camp. That's all it means. We're gonna carry on walking through this very pleasant open pasture, woodland pasture, I'd say. There's three deer. There's one on the left. Just grazing here in this woodland pasture. I mean, I was talking, they didn't even realize I was here. I'm actually downwind. Oh, there's a fourth and a fifth and a sixth. Wow. I think there's seven. There's a whole herd. Well, that's a mighty fine view to be waking up to in the morning. And we're not too far from the Seven Sisters. So I'm gonna get me uh, DOS bag out somewhere around here. Just out of the wind, because it's a bit exposed. Probably over there somewhere. All right. I've got the uh, Snug Pack Elite 2 tonight. I uh, packed the wrong bag. It's not got such a good temperature rating. The temperature shouldn't be too bad tonight. That's it for tonight. I'll find some pegs, peg down the ground sheet. As I say, that's the Snug Pack Elite 2, so I'll put some more clothes on. We'll see how we go. Right, I'm gonna get some food on the go and uh, just relax for a bit. There's a three quarter moon out, which is really nice. Oh, what a wonderful day today. Really wonderful day. Some good hiking, good views, good activity, wonderful memories. And I'm here, stealth camping, bivouacking, Minimal style. All right, just gonna have a look at that moon. Looks like a full moon, but it's not. <laughs> a night's kip under the moon. So what have we got to eat tonight, guys? Well, the menu hasn't changed since the Bahawi hike. We've got some dried vegetable. We have some bean feast. And we have some dried onion. And with that, we've got John West jacket toppers, which, as I said in the Bahawi hike, um, are reasonable in relation to the tuna fish and their health. Skipjack fish, skipjack tuna.
uh, the fish stocks of which are supposed to be pretty good. So yeah, I'm alright using that for now. Or should I say eating that? Yeah, I'll just enjoy the space. I'll soak the vegetables for 20 minutes or so. And then uh, add the bean feast and the dried onion. And boil it up and add the skipjack. Should be nice. <laughs> All right, well, I've never been here before. Never been here before. I don't even know where I am, truly. <laughs> now that's pretty far out. Yeah, it is serene. It's beautiful up here. Now that the night is falling. I've got deer for company. <laughs> that's amazing. There's loads of deer around here. I see two small herds with at least seven and maybe eight deer in each. So yeah, my food is soaking in a very serene place. <laughs> Back on the alcohol fuel, it's quieter. Look at that. That looks delicious. All that veg in there, look. I've just added bean feast, which is basically soya mince. Oh, it's so good to be out. I think about Mike now, um, the Black Country Woodsman. Hiya, Mike. I'm doing a minimal camp like Jerry McVie, and I'm thinking about you, Mike, as well about what it means for you to be out with nature and how it makes you feel deep within. It's just so visceral, isn't it? It goes right through your being. All that accumulated negativity just, you know, dissipates, dissolves. Nature takes it away. And that's what I'm feeling right now, just sat here with the moon shining, a bit of food on the go, and I'm sat in this uh, woodland pasture, this clearing, with a great view. <laughs> well, it should be in the morning. But yeah, very beautiful, I get what you feel. It's all about feeling, isn't it? Vibration. There's no two ways about it. It's a frequency. It's a vibration. It's the earth. They call it the alpha wave, don't they? Apparently, we're very tuned in to the alpha wave. We kind of resonate on the same frequency level. There are people that know a lot more about it than me. But it makes sense to me. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm out here, Mike. I'm uh, just minimal biv bivouac tonight. Just a ground sheet, DOS bag. I knew it wasn't going to rain. Stars. Should get a good night's rest. And that's what we come out for. Is some good rest. Tap in and uh, recharge, fill our cup, and uh, re illuminate, I would say. <laughs> because, man, I tell you guys, it took some effort for me to come out today. I cancelled twice. I was that depressed. I mean, super depressed. So, uh, it's all an illusion, isn't it? You know, I laugh, I giggle, I do whatever. You know, have some fun along the way, but you know, the back end has been really hard. But once you're out the door, all that changes. It all changes. Different view altogether.
keep looking at that moon. <laughs> camera, moon, camera, moon, moon, camera. <laughs> you see, my mood has changed. And that's how miraculous it is. Movement, activity, space, nature. So yeah, whew, I can feel it. It's just brilliant, it's just amazing. All right. Cheers, Mike, for great videos. Cheers, Jerry, Jerry McVie, for fabulous hikes and bivvies. Ollie, Ollie Outdoors, keep it going, man. We're all out there, mate. It's not easy. There's a good few of us out there that uh, struggle with things. Yeah, you've got another sector in the outdoors that, um, you know, got life good. But there are those out there who are struggling with depression and anxiety and lots of other stuff. So, uh, you know, I do understand. If you're one of those, I understand. All right. Almost ready to eat. I'll bring you back. There it is again, guys. There's the skipjack tuna. The soya bean feast. Vegetables, onion. I found a trail feast, which I like. <laughs> right, we're going to get this uh, warmed up. And we're going to walk around this hill and enjoy the meal. Yeah, with some Warburton Thins, that's my meal. This is really pleasant here. Plonked in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in the middle of somewhere, we'll call it. <laughs> we'll call it in the middle of somewhere. Morning everyone. It's a rather chilly morning on top of this hill. Beyond the Seven Sisters somewhere. The Seven Sisters is around here somewhere. We'll find it this morning. I didn't have a, a great night's sleep at all. I thought I was going to get a great night's sleep. I think what it was, I ate too late. Um, it was 10 o'clock. And I had some coffee as well. So I think all that energy, fuel, that I'd put into my body and the coffee uh, kept me awake for most of the night. Yeah, as I was saying, the batteries ran out. Uh, as for sleep, no. I did uh, eventually go to sleep, uh, a light sleep, and uh, something beautiful happened last night as I was in some kind of uh, deep meditation come sleep. Uh, I heard Paul call out my name. Uh, Claire audience. Mark, Mark. And immediately I opened my eyes. I went, oh, Paul, good to hear from you, I said. It was beautiful. Yeah, they call that Claire audience. Not sure how it works. But it was a, a beautiful moment, it went right through my body. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting, interesting night. I had to um, get my tarp out and uh, put it over my sleeping bag at around about 2.30 in the morning, two o'clock. Because I was cold, I was getting wet. My sleeping bag was wet. I'd underestimated the dew, the amount of dew. I did look for my bivy bag before coming out, but I couldn't find it. I think it must be at my mother's or something. So I put the tarp over my sleeping bag, which uh, acted as a, a bivy bag, and it worked a treat. It kept some 
heat from escaping and it kept me dry as well. So here's what I did. Just put my tarp over my sleeping bag. As you can see, it looks like a bivy bag. We all need it, don't we? I'm not sure what tree this is, but it's very pleasant. I was right to sit under it, I think. It's quite a unique view. Okay, that's me packed. That was an enjoyable night there. As Spigapus says, thank you, Spot. Good windbreak that hedge. Good windbreak. So we're on top of the hill here. Just give you some perspective. That's our spot. And that's where we are in relation to the countryside around me where I am. <laughs> yeah, a good place to flop out. All right, catch you up. Yeah, beautiful woodland. Lots of it. Now, I'm no expert, but I think this flower here is called a crane's bill. They grow in rather large colonies, if you like. like over here. I think they're cranes, Bill. If they are, they're a member of the geranium family and you can find them in prairies and meadows and mixed woodland, alpine regions. And this wood is rich in flowers, flora and fauna. You can find orchids lower down as well in the meadows. And um, what are they called? Other flowers such as avens. Now I'm not an ex expert as I say. I was just reading on this before I came out. The amount of uh, different flower species you can find here. <clears throat> More light, beautiful. Love the light that comes through the woodland. The High Meadow Trail. Ah yes, this looks this looks more favourable. This looks better. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, wonderful. That's what we came for, guys. Check this out. Came through there yesterday, the Biblins campsite. It's over there. This is where I was going to bivy last night, guys. I was going to wake up to this this morning. 
we'll do it again some other time. Oh, that's wonderful. Now that's a view of the way I was looking forward to. Absolutely gorgeous. As I say, through to Monmouth, Tintin, Landogo, Chepstow. And it's all woodland like this, all the way down. For miles and miles and miles. There's nowhere quite like it in the UK. It's absolutely stupendous, wonderful. All right, I'm gonna get my sack off. I'm gonna get on that bluff. Makes my stomach a bit queasy, but hey, <laughs> I wanna get a good photo. Nice and steady does it. <laughs> I've been watching the birds fly through the valley above the river. Here, here are two now. I've been watching them fly into the canopy of trees. Almost as if I'm right in there. life zone. Kind of at the same height, even above. I mean, it's, it's really quite a strange sensation to see life, bird life from this angle. Okay guys, we're here and we're on the limestone bluffs and we are talking to... My name's Ian, Ian Draycott. Ian Draycott. And I'm walking my dog Molly. And we're walking Molly here. And we're on top of the Seven Sisters guys. Yeah. And uh, Ian has lived here for how long Ian? I've lived here for seven years. Yeah. I'm quite lucky to have found a place. Yeah. Up here on the Dower, on the edge of the Y. Yeah, it's a treasure, isn't it? It's a lovely place, and I particularly love it because it's really rich in wildlife, including yeah. rare species. Yeah. There's even, well, as we stand here, there's, there's uh, lime trees. Yeah. Uh, white beam trees. And some of the white beams that you get on the yeah. Howard, yeah. you get nowhere else in the world. Oh, that's interesting. To this area of limestone. I was reading about that earlier, the white beams. Yeah. Yeah. They're very special. Something like 14 species of white. Yeah, orchids as well. There's nowhere else. Yeah, the orchids are really yeah. good. There's, uh, at the moment, this morning I saw some bird's nest orchids. Oh, you did? And um, there's still a little bit early. In a right. couple of weeks there'll be a lot more spotted orchids and butterfly orchids. Right. The early purple orchids are now moved more or less. I was reading that there are 52 species in the UK, in which, the is, UK. which is quite a variety, isn't it? I think we've got about 10 species here on the down. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Are they tricky to identify? Are, are some similar? Most of them or, are okay. They're yeah. not too hard, the ones we get here. Yeah. But um, other parts of the UK are becoming a bit tricky. So we get yeah. Them. You are interested in the birds as well, Ian? Yeah, I'm a, I You're a bird. myself as a general naturalist. You're a twitcher. <laughs> no, not really a twitch. Twitch is uh, when you travel off to sea. Uh, yeah, that's or, right, yeah. Uh, vagrant. That's right. And, and, yeah, if one, um, if one appeared sort of... 10, 20 miles away, I might be yeah. here, uh, tempted to go, but normally I just uh, interested in what passes through my own patch. What would you say your favourite to observe is, do you think? I don't know, really a favourite. 
Yeah. No, 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 yeah. It depends where I am in, in the woodlands. I just love the bird sound. Like, sure, like yeah. Here on the Dow, we've got lots of warblers, we've got wood warblers, right. and, uh, garden warblers. Spring. So it's the sound that's really powerful for you. The sound is really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they add to the atmosphere. The yeah, absolutely. But uh, I also like going to marshes, which, um, right. which there aren't any good marshes near here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where would and you travel? Where would you travel for them? Well, either the Gwent levels. Oh, or I sometimes see. Sometimes even further afield. Last week I went to Somerset levels. Oh, I see. And and oh, right, yeah. But, uh, they're kind of returning, aren't they? Yeah, they're. they're yeah, good. But uh, of course, you haven't got the scenery there. No. The yeah, right. Well, it's been a real pleasure, Ian. Well, nice uh, to really good. You. Yeah, good to meet you. All right, guys. Uh, good to meet Ian. Uh, I'll draw it to a close here. I'm going to check out one more bluff, which is about 200 meters, I would say, east, I guess. Uh, and then um, we're going to head off into Monmouth then. All right. Uh, I'll catch you up. I'll bring you back. Okay. Peace. Here we are, the last of the bluffs. See what view we get. Wonderful, beautiful, spectacular. I'm going to have uh, a bit of a break here. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, great. Just more appreciation for the why. I've enjoyed some uh, great views in the why. All the way up the Cambrians, all the way down. Uh, I've really enjoyed these. These are some of the best views. Mind you, I can't say that really. It's all unique. It's all different. All right, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to film for a bit. And then uh, try and make my way down and into Monmouth. All right, I'll get back to you when I'm finished. Okay. Okay, that's me done from the Seven Sisters in the Y Valley, guys. That was brilliant. Good wild camp last night, somewhere up there. <laughs> I walked around these woods like a headless chicken, but I found the Seven Sisters after. Had a great hike in yesterday. I've really enjoyed myself. I hope you have enjoyed yourself watching the video. All right, if you want to give us a thumbs up, please do, guys. If you want to comment, you know me, I always get back to you. And if you want to subscribe, don't forget to hit the button below. Always happy to hear from you. Okay, that's brilliant. Fantastic. Take care. Bye now.